So this is the uh, green eyed spur dog, the squalus, what we're calling uh, Mitsukurii, but it's really a different species. But it's got this little black smudge on the tail. But just like the two hakes, the shallow and the deep species of hake we're using as our primary toxicology lab rat, so to speak, we have two species of spiny dogfish we're used, using kind of the same way. This guy here is uh, our deeper version. We typically get them between 400 and 700 meters, 400 and 600 meters deep. And then the uh, Cuban dogfish, uh, Squalus cubensis, we get more like 200 to 400 meters deep. So, it's Squalus mitsukurii is what it's being called, but it's a species complex. It's probably something completely different. The common name is green-eyed spur dog, but that'll probably change too once once it's ID to what it actually is. All of these deep water sharks tend to be a lot of them. Once you start looking at them close, they're species complexes. You know, they've all been ID'd as the same thing worldwide, but then once you start looking at them genetically and looking at them closely, uh, morphologically, you notice that they're different, quite different. So uh, this one will probably be named something else um, in the next couple of years. So, this is exactly what we expected to find here. These dogfish and that one species of hake. We may get a few other things here, some tile fish. We're just starting to get into the gulper shark range. And then we may get some more of the chain cat sharks in the trap at the end, maybe, if we're lucky. So this is the dusky smooth hound, Mustelis canis. Really odd population of these guys here. I mean, this is a species that most of its range uses shallow water coastal estuaries as a as its nursery ground. But out here in the Gulf of Mexico, they actually pop and apparently live their whole life history out here in 300, 400 meters of water. An animal that's usually find in Chesapeake Bay as a juvenile when it's this big, tiny little guy. And it's out here in 1,300, 1,400 feet of water. It's crazy. I can come up with theories, but <laughs> we don't really know. I mean, you use nurseries. Usually a, a shark uses a nursery because they provide them protection from predation and plenty of food. And you would think that in, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 feet of water, there wouldn't be much protection. You know, there's a lot of things out here. But when you start looking at the bigger fish assemblages out here, you do actually see that there's this depth refuge perhaps from predation for these guys so that where the, the bigger fish that would eat them sort of drop off in an abundance. And so uh, maybe there is protection here, but there's then there's certainly plenty of food. These guys are predominantly crab eaters. And there's a lot of crabs out here.